is the inflation bogeyman story that's going around the world. Is it fake news? It, it, it's real news in that the price of these things is going up. But as we were just saying in my analysis and observation of commodity prices, is that it's starting to peter out. That, okay, the, the price of a lot of these things, and again, be it petrol or whatever, they, they are high, there's no question. But, and it's important, but we do have evidence that a lot of these prices are coming back down. And it takes a while for it to be passed through from the shipping company to the trucking company to you and me when we go out and buy stuff you know, on the street. The inflation rate is correct, but I suspect that when we start to get these supply chain issues resolved, and they will be, when we get uh, some of this um, concern about the hot demand in the US economy previously and all this other stuff coming through, we'll be shocked in 12 to 18 months' time about how low inflation will be. So, and we'll um, look back at this period of history. Our chart of inflation will be bouncing along. Whoa! And then it'll come all the way back down like a, you know, one of those things where you so have your blood pressure say, taken. Let's say inflation in a year's time. This time next year is between two and three, which is yep, could be, know, which yep. is the range. Yes. Let's say even say it's, it's a touch above three. Three, but, it, but it'll be on its way but down it, to two and three. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, no yeah, question. Let's yes. say it is. And uh, but let's say the interest rates three percent. Sure. I don't think the Reserve Bank will be unhappy if the cash rate is three percent. And inflation is between two and three because it gives them some headroom. I think that's a nice way to analyse that issue and what the Reserve Bank are thinking. Now, it's a moving feast. As we know, there are many moving parts of this sort of uh, incredible machine that's the economy. But I think that scenario is a realistic one. And the Reserve Bank are looking at that, some of their four or 500 economists that they've got there, they're looking at that every day as well. They're trying to work out what on earth is happening to this inflation issue. And I suspect they're sort of thinking that, okay, if by the middle or the second half of 2023, we've got inflation back to three, two and a half percent, something like that. If we've got an official interest rate at 3%, thereabouts, and we've still got the unemployment rate below 4%. Don't forget about unemployment. Yeah, the RBA likes unemployment low. Well, we all do. It's good. Everyone's got a job. Fantastic. If that's the sort of scenario, then I think they're going to have a little bit of a party there at no, Martin I think Place, so too. and then they're, and then they're going to have a bit of a stop take and say, "Okay, where to now? Do we need to hike anymore? Probably not. Do we need to cut? Well, let's not be too early. You know, we want to make sure that we've got this right. You know, things change and they can change really quickly. Have we got it? Right? Let's just wait a little while. But then the scenario comes at the very end of 2023 with the CPI possibly heading to two, the bottom half of the range, is a 3% cash rate appropriate? And that will be the fascinating discussion for the RBA. That's what I'm looking forward to. That, at the that end part. of 23, we've got the cash rate at three. Uh, can we cut? Well, to keep the economy with good momentum, creating jobs, creating wealth for Australians, and all these things that the Reserve Bank objective is for the betterment of the Australian people. Which They don't which want a recession. The mandate. That's the they mandate. don't want a downturn. They want to manage it. And as I said, sometimes you've got to take away the candy, you know, because <laughs> you're having too much of it. And they're taking away the candy right now. But then there comes a point, here you go, you've done well, here's a reward. Everyone's playing a game here. The RBA's gaming, the government's gaming, the global <laughs> leaders are gaming, the consumers are gaming, the real estate agents are gaming, the media is gaming. They're all gaming. Yep. And, uh, and not necessarily all at the same time, but they're all trying to take advantage of situations that are occurring. And as long as you look at it that way and arm yourself with knowledge and information and stay patient, yep. don't panic. If, you, if you're not in that much pressure, you know, try to not panic too much yep. and just take a step back and a breath and listen to stuff and read stuff. But read it. I think you're better off reading it, what the Reserve Bank says on Tuesday at 2.31 p.m. What he says. Correct. I think you're better off reading what the ABS says. Problem is they often listen to what a commentator might say 10 times down the line on a TV show on television. And a lot of times they're not even economists. And a lot of them are so gloomy. And again, well, think, about the, they play the think about the media cycle. If you're, if you're a person that says, I think housing's going to be for a period of moderate price falls before they recover again, you're not going to get interviewed. You put out a press release. Oh, I think house prices are going to drop 25%. Financial stress is a disaster. Shock sells. And 
shock does sell. Oh, the it, shock on the wab or shock on the yeah, way down? That's right. And we're, we're in a, we are in a down uh, a moderation cycle right now and it's easy to get publicity from a big negative story. Media and that's where the media have got to be careful and you've got to be careful when you read, read this stuff.